Good evening, welcome to Crown Television Grand News. My name is Tandi Rebanda Kavaso. Remember that you're watching us live on Topster Channel 89 DTT and Channel 543 on DTH. We are also live on Star Times application and Facebook. And you can also now subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crown TV Zambia. Now, before the news in detail, just a quick reminder that we have introduced a new segment on our news that we are calling Letter to the President. You too can be part of this particular um, activity by also sending your message to the president and sending the letter to the number 0979-958392 or send it by text and avoid vulgar language. Today's headlines, ERB will tomorrow announce new ZESCO tariffs. President Hichile Mari affirms commitment to church partnership. Zanako gives Kusefia Pangwen a ceremony thousand quarter. And in our sports news, first president Andrew Kamanga reviews payment of clubs with players at the World Cups. And the news in detail. The Energy Regulation Board ERB is tomorrow, 21st April 2023, expected to announce the approved new Zesco tariffs. Zesco applied to increase its tariffs by an average of 37%. In an interview with Crown Television, ERB Board Chairperson Reynolds Boer says his team has made its decision on the new tariffs, but the Zambia Consumer Association Executive Secretary Juva Sakala says any further upward adjustments in electricity tariffs will negatively affect Zambians. Following the application by Zesco to increase tariffs by an average of 37% to the Energy Regulation Board last year, the day of reckoning is here. It is no longer whether tariffs will be increased, but by how much Zesco has been asking for electricity tariffs increase for some years now, but political expedience wins the day. But in February this year, the ERB hosted a meeting with electricity consumers to find out on objections to the Zesco application and the objections are clear. Now, ERB board chairman Reynolds Wawa has told Crown Television that Friday, 21st April 2023, the board will inform the public on whether the application has been approved or not. Yes, uh, the Zesco applied for, for a tariff review, and the ERB followed the process by way of uh, notifying the public that Zesco has made an application. Uh, and calling for the comments from the public. After comments were received, there was a public hearing, and after the public hearing, the ERB retired to consider its uh, verdict on the application in light of the ZESCO submissions, the submissions by uh, members of the public, as well as uh, government policy and direction. Okay. And uh, we have prepare the position which we will make known to the public tomorrow at 15 hours. Zambia Consumers Association was part of the stakeholders who took part in the meeting who argues that any slight upwards adjustment in the delivery of power will have a negative impact on the public. Any adjustment upwards, especially on electricity, which, is that, which touches the lives of people, or the day-to-day living, and even the manufacturing sector, is not welcome. We have stated it, and we are still saying the same. So, as Zaka, we do not support this 70% of uh, electricity adjustment. We are not in support of it. And energy expert Johnston Chikwanda feels there will be a slight upwards adjustment of electricity, looking at the current cost of electricity.
The last time the country observed an adjustment in the ZESCO tariffs was in 2019. Take note, the ZESCO 37% tariff increase application is the average but not all the definite. Msole Mgara, Crown TV News, Lusaka. Zambia Union of Government and Allied Workers President Kavi Samuyawa has called for the amendment of the Public Service Pensions Fund Act stating that it will help all workers, including those not subscribed, to NAPSA to access their partial benefits before retirement. Mr. Muyawa says the union is concerned that government decided to only consider workers under NAPSA, leaving out others when the labor market comprises workers represented by other institutions. This comes after the signing into law of the National Pension Scheme Amendment Bill number 1 of 2023 by President Haga and H. Lama on the 17th of April 2023. The signing of the bill into the law by the President enables members of the scheme to access pre-retirement benefits amongst other issues. On the 17th of April 2023, President Haka Inde Ichilema announced the signing into law of the National Pension Scheme Amendment Bill No. 1 of 2023, which allows for the partial withdrawal of pensions. The signing of the bill into law by the President enables members of the scheme to access pre-retirement benefits, among other issues. This has been received with excitement by members of the scheme who are impatient to access their monies as demonstrated by the number of people queuing up at the NAPSA offices. The would-be beneficiaries have expressed happiness following the decision by government to allow them access part of their benefits before the retirement age. I just wanted to thank the government for the very wonderful initiative because it will help most of the people. Yes, some of the parents died minus receiving their benefits. Now it is far much better for us to at least having this partial payment it we can make something from this partial payment chitireba bana pseyi kuru badirwa ndi ndi chimone chi ichisuma sana pantu ilia ilia ya kolorela pakupoka ko tunda lama twalero lela 55 ilia ya 55 kwale babengi bale bale kwa tokufwa limbya shinda lama so iba chitire ili Likando Wayaya of Lusaka has appealed to his fellow would-be beneficiaries to reinvest the funds into various ventures and assets of their choice, as opposed to misusing their pre-retirement benefits. But permit this thing, and people could even that we may have to abandon, we may have to go so that the chance of to take the COVID event we may still not go and so cheat. For a lifetime, because my chances are better, I can beat. And Zambia Union of Government and Allied Workers President Kavi Samuyaywa has appealed to government to equally amend the Public Service Pensions Fund Act to level the field. Now, if this partial withdrawal is just introduced for those who are on NAPSA and not for those on PSPF. There will seemingly be some sort of uh, uh, disparities, and uh, it is not good, uh, you know, to have a situation where employees doing the same job in the same salary scale, contributing to two different patients' schemes, because when the pension schemes give out the entitlements. You'll find that uh, the entitlements are different. So there will be some sort of uh, disparities, inequalities, which are not uh, desirable in uh, issues of employment. So to harmonize this, we would uh, appeal to the government to also consider uh, making similar amendments to the Public Service Specials Fund so that uh, even members under the Public Service Specials Fund can uh, have uh, a facility such as the one accorded to those under NAPSA to access 
The new law will give members of NAPSA who have contributed for at least a minimum of 16 months or have turned a minimum age of 45 to get 20% of their retirement package. Ivan Spanda, Crown TV News, Lusaka. President Hanga and Echilema says the new Don government will run the country on the basis of inclusiveness, equity and unity. He says despite the diversity of churches in Zambia, uni unity must be upheld. Mr. Echilema says economic stability can only be attained if there is unity in the country. And Council of Churches in Zambia, President Saulo Sipaika, says the president should not feel offended when the church raises concerns about certain matters as they are the ones on the ground. He says the church will continue to pray and engage government on various issues that enhance peace and unity in the country. He said this when they paid a courtesy call on the president at State House this morning. For a long time, the church has largely contributed to the promotion of peace and unity in the country. With the declaration of Zambia as a Christian nation, successful governments have embraced that principle. When they visited the Republican president, Council of Churches in Zambia have told the president that he should not feel offended whenever he receives critics. And so, Mr. President, when we bring certain issues, it does not mean that we hate you. It does not mean that we want to bring you down. But we bring those concerns because we are on the ground. And we listen to what our people are trying for. And so we bring them, bring them here for that mutual understanding that together we may develop this beautiful country. Mr. President, I want to state that as a council of churches in Zambia, additionally, we want to say it is also our duty as we lead the people that we may also be accountable to them. And President Harande Ichilema says his government will run the country based on unity as it is a factor in economic growth. Mr. Ichilema says his government wants to see unity despite having diversity of churches in Zambia. Unity is very important in this country. To work together, share vision is extremely important. So one of the things that we are priming ourselves on is to bring the country together. It is diversity. And someone coined it in the 90s, unity in diversity. I do remember that when she was well at the Santa Breakfast of the Dream during Tirana to the 1991 elections. Um, so she was a member of the program. And she addressed the box square meeting there The church does not only transform the spiritual lives of people in the country, but also impacts good morals and values in people through the promotion of peace and unity.
Star of Sinchimba, reporting for Kaon TV News in Osaka. Some parents in Lusaka's George compound have wondered why the Lusaka City Council is failing to curb underage alcohol drinking, which has become rampant in the area. Patrick Molenga says children as young as 15 are accessing alcohol as it is being made available to them, with the most common one known as Junta selling at only 10 kwacha. The parents have demanded that the Lusaka City Council moves in the area to curb underage drinking as many young people are now turning into junkies. Details in this report. It is evident from his looks that Michael Mwale is indeed a youth. All things being equal, Michael Mwale and friends were expected to be in a learning environment. But Michael and his two friends meet here almost every day to imbibe spirits, commonly known as junta, and share a cigarette according to their budget. Around 11 hours, the three musketeers are presumed to have honored their debt. Michael and his friends are just among many youths in George Compound and many others in Lusaka who are abusing alcohol despite several programs being implemented by the government. But Michael and his friends claim to have their reasons. I basically, as in my youth, so basically, someone. A concerned parent, Patrick Molenga, has blamed this behavior to lack of strictness on who can have access to alcohol and their affordability. Any problem, I go under I pay the capari ponce, pari ponce. Every foot in our men, I never go to some more. Now, every foot sometimes in that woman and Gana Manning. Swanga zuguri saka mwana wakaguri samu wakamwana kanika ngono kariso. Bafu nika walanga na kamwana kariso yu. Iwe, sufa nika kubwere ugula mwana. Kawuzi wa nima kubwere wa unewa kutuma wabwere wa gureweka. Mae peze ka wakao na kagula, kaenda na kumwa, wakao na kakao na kakumwa. Kabwere wa nukugula na wina wakagurisa na kagurisa. So, stizi waka pena futi na wewe wakansu wangalanga. Nipo buwanji pari yu problemu. And when contacted for a comment, the Saka City Council Public Relations Department referred to the press statement on night patrols in 2022. Whatever that means when night patrols don't resolve in discriminate sale of alcohol. For now, many youths in Lusaka like Michael and his friends will continue enjoying Junta under the watch of Lusaka City Council, much to the disadvantage of their health. Christine Mapani, Crown TV News, Lusaka. We do take our first set of commercials. Do stay with us as we come back with more news stories lined up. Your name is there? Yes, I still can't believe it. Anyway, congratulations. Me, last time I bend it down. But why? You see, my life is down. I can't. Why would I be watching my TV? And that meant I have to give you my latest double door fridge. I call number. But haven't you heard of Savenda Solar? What? With Savenda Solar, you can live off the power grid or not get bothered with long hours of load shedding or power blackouts. Power lighting for your farm, house, office space, or the great outdoors with zero noise. No pollution to the environment and absolutely no extra costs to your pocket. For orders and details on our international standard Savenda Solar products, call us on 0971-850-031. I wanted to find out, is my place still available? Savenda, save nations, develop Africa.
Welcome to the most happening game show in the Netherlands. My name is EDNA, I am the People's Bay, and this is Pungwa, the game duo. Now on this show, two celebrities or two influencers compete in a series of games. At the end of it all, somebody gets to walk away with some cool cash, or maybe should I say Chikupra is moody with you one time. It's not the homicide. side. It's what? Ah, let me think again. Ah, no, I think I've done this one. Gross side. Grocery stores. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. Mm. Especially that I am going to annihilate Mumbai Archie. What are you doing? Are you good? I'm a spelling school. I have a question. Yes or no? What matters to not graduate? The question is could the police officer be good? I'm going to get the Stop that. Imagine eh? That's what I'm thinking about. Stop it. It is Pungwa the Game Duo and let the celebrity games begin! Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. Motorists in Kipush Road on the portion of Kiamato area are having a challenge in the area as it is becoming impossible. Drivers are complaining of vehicles getting stuck on the road and Northern Pro West, Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary Washikoti Katambe is concerned about the status of the road. Here's a report. Tough times for motorists, commuters as part of Kipush border road worsens. Kipush border in Mushindama district of Northern Province is a busy area in the district. This obviously explains why government chose it a place where business activities can be conducted. The road links Northern Province to Congo. Motorists have expressed concern over the worsening condition of the road. Some portions of the road have been rendered impassable by deep potholes. Some concerned drivers explain that lying on the road now poses serious danger to road users and their vehicles. Due to heavy rains, for the past few days, some parts of the road are still flooded with water. Northern Province Permanent Secretary Kane Wishkot Katambi is concerned. Road. As we speak to you, Honorable Minister, this road is almost impassable. It's almost impassable. There are tracks that are marooned on the way in between this junction and the Kipush border, thereby depriving us of the much needed revenue. Mind you, Minister, we get a lot of foreign revenues in terms of dollars from just this road, that's road, because of the amount of traffic that you find used this road. Patrick Mackay, Crown News, Solwezi. Construction of a waterborne ablution block has commenced at Ilume Primary School in Makushi District. This follows the challenge the school has been facing with latrines which have been collapsing from time to time, thereby affecting the school. The project has excited the Makushi District Education Board Secretary Felistas Kalembo, who said she is looking forward to having more waterborne ablution blocks in many schools in the district. The ablution blocks are being constructed under the 2022 Constituency Development Fund. More details in this report. Makoshi's Ilume Primary School with a population of 1,115 learners has been grappling with toilets as several latrines which were built collapsed while these have remained deceitfully standing like that in use when in fact not. This was mentioned by school head teacher Elvis Jizuga when the district leadership visited the school. The third or fourth point of building the staff toilets, I mean the, the children's toilet. 
the other side, it was that side, then it went the other side, then they brought it here. We thought here it's up, but uh, still we saw that uh, they were collapsing. The number of children are increasing, and uh, that's how we opted to apply for a CDF to help us. Well, it seems the challenge will soon come to pass as construction of a waterborne ablution block at a total cost of 287,000 Kwacha 2022 Constituents Development Fund is underway. And this has excited the District Education Board Secretary, Felistas Kalembo. And we are very happy as Minister of Education. Of course, there is a directive that uh, we are supposed to do away with pit latrines in our schools. We should have waterborne toilets and this is just the beginning. And we just hope that through CDF, more of such constructions will go into our primary schools. Likewise, the school head girl thanked government for putting up an ablution block and further appealed to have the desk situation addressed. The construction of the PP's ablution block and sinking of the boho. We say thank you very much. It is our dream that even the shortage of desks will be addressed. The local authority through Mkusha Town Council Secretary Manuel Lukopwa is impressed with the works done by the contractor so far. The contractor has impressed us in terms of progress. Uh, I should make mention that I think from, from the very beginning, uh, from the time that we awarded the contract, the contractor mobilized immediately without any advance. There is that perception regarding our Zambian contractors that normally they don't perform. But I think with him, the progress that has been made so far, I think we are, we are very, very happy. The local contractor Country House was awarded this project, which is currently standing at 80%. Government's direction is clear on need to do away with more trains in schools, and this is just the beginning in the district. Joseph Siambihi, Crown, TV News, Mukoshi. Let's see what we have in today's letter to the president. Letter to the President. Subject, NAPSA Partial Benefits Access. Dear Mr. President, no one refuses money and some of us as housewives are in need of money. It is important that we are educated on how to benefit from the NAPSA Partial Benefits Access. We are saying so because our husbands work, but we are only housewives. Mr. President, Wives should be made signatories to the NAPSA partial benefits access, otherwise side chicks will start going to Dubai. We also don't want to be divorced after our husbands got partial benefits. Mr. President, forewarned is forearmed. Money is the root of all evil, but this should not be allowed. We want to be educated on the access to the partial benefits by our husbands and our husbands should also know. Mr. President, your good gesture on partial benefits should be for better for us. NAPSA benefits are a better option, and therefore we should spend wisely as married couples. Just call me Vanalulu of Lusaka. We take another step of commercials to join us with more news items after this break. Monozygous is a term used for twins that look so alike. Well, we can say that these bulbs look the same. And they do the same job of giving out light. But they are different. This one here is an incandescent bulb, while this one is an LED bulb. Not just any LED bulb, but a Savenda LED bulb. You see, the Savenda LED bulb is made with you in mind. It uses 90% less electricity as compared to his twin brother, the incandescent bulb. Need I say that it lasts 20 times longer and lights bright like a diamond? <laughs> Get the Savenda LED bulb today, which comes in different wattages and types, suitable for indoor and outdoor areas. Save a lot with Savenda LED bulbs while living on the bright side of life. Savenda Electric. See the difference.
Kick off the month of April with variety. Catch the Copa del Rey. Enjoy greater entertainment and hilarious kids content. For affordable 160 quarter antenna classic OD Smart. Start the month with the best of football as Spanish giants step to the turf. Witness Barcelona versus Real Madrid on Wednesday, the 5th of April, live 21 hours on Wild Football. But earlier on Tuesday, the 4th of April, live 21 hours. Catch in action, Athletic versus Osasuna in the battle for a final slot on wild football. There is plenty on Topstar. Intrigue yourself to the best and latest of Pungwa, the game duo every Sunday at 19 hours and the freshest series every day at 2040 hours on Novella E+, Plus, the best of Hollywood on Z1 and Starlife. Then welcome the kids home for holidays with the latest kids entertainment on Cartoon, Toonami and more. You can't think twice with Topstar. Subscribe now. Welcome back. Zanaco Bank has handed over 150 quarter check towards the hosting of Okusefa Pangwenya traditional ceremony. Zanaco Head of Client Solutions, Marketing and Corporate Communications, Chanda Katongo, says the ceremony is an important celebration as it reminds Zambians of their roots. She says the bank believes that a nation without a history or a culture is dead, hence their participation in supporting the ceremony. She notes that traditional ceremonies do play an important role in supporting the tourism sector, and the bank stands ready to support all traditional ceremonies. From the 10th to the 12th of August 2023, the members will be reacting their journey from Angola to Zambia. The Bemba Royal Establishment caused the ceremony, Oksevia Pangwena ceremony, to be held in Mungwe district of Northern Province. But this ceremony is not only for the Bembas, it has assumed a national, if not international, character. Their delegates and others alike will therefore need a well organized ceremony. It is for this reason that the Oksefia Pangwena Ceremony Midrans Fundraising Committee on the 12th of April kick-started this year's fundraising activities which has seen a number of donations as well as pledges. Zanako Bank has honored its pledge towards the successful hosting of the ceremony with a donation of 150,000 kwacha. We are honored to host you today as we honor our pledge towards the successful hosting of the Uksefia Pangwena ceremony, which is an important celebration that reminds us of our roots. As a homegrown bank, Zanako believes in a nation, believes that a nation without a history or culture is dead. And therefore, we need to preserve our history and our culture through continuous reminders of who we are. And we believe that ceremonies like Uksefia Pangwena really tells us who we are and this should be passed on from generation to generation we understand the value that tradition ser traditional ceremonies bring in supporting the tourism sector and we stand ready to support traditional ceremonies across all 10 provinces and Uksefia Pangwena Midrand Fundraising Committee Chairperson 
Dr. Waja Chitewa has appreciated the gesture by Zanako. We are very grateful and very happy to be here um, on behalf of Mwinodwemba himself, Mwinodwemba Chitimkulu, Kanyanta Mananga II, to, to be able to receive um, what we are calling an investment. And so this year we really want to do things a little differently. We are looking to you to come with us as a partner. And so not only look at what we're doing today as a donation, but to look at it as the beginning of this journey together until we culminate um, in the ceremony. And Chief Chitimkulu Kanyantamanga II was represented by his young brother, Colonel Edward Chanda Sosala, who called on all Zambians to ensure that the culture is preserved and passed on to younger generations. You know, I'm very happy with what we have gone through and we have matured and we are hoping that uh, we shall achieve more and more in our cultural values as Zambians. A nation without uh, cultural values is like a car without an engine. So we are asking our young people to join hands and come and learn from us. We have to pass on what we, le what we know, what we learned to the new generation. So we are inviting the young generation to get, to get or to put interest in cultural education, cultural traditions and values. Uksefia Pangwena is a traditional ceremony held under Chitimkuru by Bemba people in Mungu district of northern province. This year's ceremony is significant as the Bemba people will be celebrating 10 years of Mwinelu Bemba Chitimkuru Kanyanta Manga II's reign on the throne. But for Zanako, it has proven it is big, strong and reliable. Evans Banda, Crown TV News, Lusaka. The African Chamber of Trade and Commerce says the Zambian cotton industry is on a positive trajectory and poised for growth. The African Chamber of Trade President Mary Atang says the strides Zambia is applying to revitalize the industry will soon pay dividends. Mrs. Atang has advised Zambia to adopt policies that will promote value addition in the cotton sector. She says revitalizing the textile industry will create the much needed jobs and wealth creation. She says supporting value addition is the only way to end poverty on the continent. Mrs. Antang has implored African countries to prioritize trade amongst themselves. The ACC president recently visited the country where she has held meetings with agriculture stakeholders, including cotton industry players. For the few days that I've been in Zambia, I have observed a lot of positive energy, a lot of enthusiasm to see that the Zambian cotton sector is redeemed and restored to where it was decades ago and that the yield on the return from input is actually quantitative and qualitative so that the cotton farmer in Zambia is able to make a living out of the cotton plant. I'm so impressed because uh, when we talk about development and we talk about meeting the UN development goals and talking about welfare for the human, human being as a right, I think this is the right approach. Looking to see that the people at the base, the bottom, are actually catered for such that their activities in farming and the activity in the added, added value chain becomes really uh, uh, competitive and entrepreneurial so it's profitable to feed the farmers and to feed the farmers association and to grow the economy of the nation. It's a very progressive approach that I've witnessed and I'm very flattered and I'm very happy that I took the initiative to partner, that the ACC took the initiative to partner with the Zambia Cotton Board so that in this sector of activity, which is the cotton sector and its value chain and addition, we are able to work together. In other news stories, the construction of the first ever level one hospital in Solezi district of northwestern province has stalled 11 months after government officials had the groundbreaking ceremony. Vice President Mutalina Lumango has assured residents that the construction was supposed to begin in 2022. Had assured the residents, I beg your pardon, that the construction was supposed to begin in 2022. However, when queried why the construction of the hospital has stalled, Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary Keno Washikoti Katambi says there is no information from government when the contractor will move on site. Details in the following report. 
On 14th May 2022, the country's Vice President, Mutalana Lumango, came to Solo's district for the groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of the Northwestern Teaching Hospital. Eleven months down the line, residents of Northwestern Province are still patiently waiting for the construction of the referral hospital. Take a groundbreaking ceremony on account of the construction of specialized hospital that will service the province, thereby adding to the existing health facilities. Therefore, let me state that this day marks a very special moment for the people of Northwestern Province and Zambia at large, because by this event, we are fulfilling the mission of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number three, which is two, and I quote. This was a groundbreaking ceremony, and this is the land where the construction of the Refro Hospital is supposed to save thousands of residents here. This reporter had a chance to speak to Northern Province Permanent Secretary Kane Wishkot Katambi regarding what is pertaining on the ground. And this is all what Kane Katambi had to say. It has not been explained why it has told is the hospital. The hospital. If you recall Honorable Minister, the Honorable Minister herself came here, <coughs> we showed her the site. Eventually, we were privileged to have in our meetings the Vice President coming to, you know, officiate at the groundbreaking ceremony. And we are told, we are told that that project was going to take off almost immediately. So far, on the Minister, as we speak to you, there is nothing happening out there. It is even overgrowing with elephant grass. And nothing is coming through as to why and when we are going to see a contract on site. Patrick Mackay, Crown News, Solwezi. We do take our last set of commercials. Do join us with our international and sports news after this break. <laughs> Welcome you to the wonderful world of Savenda Electronics. At Savenda Electronics, we pride ourselves in manufacturing high-quality electricity and water meters. Boasting of the first of its kind state-of-the-art manufacturing plant in Zambia, Savenda Electronics manufactures customized smart electricity and water meters of international standards for both the local and international water and electricity utility companies. Our highly computerized factory run by qualified staff makes, calibrates and electronically tests the smart meters to ensure only those meeting customer specifications are delivered to the market. Some of the main features which come with our meters include notifications about low units, tempering, low battery, and many more customized features. Savenda Electronics provides on and off site after sales service and has favorable contract terms for water and electricity utility companies. Savenda Electronics, the real deal. Coming soon is your top 10 Zambian music video countdown on Crown TV. To submit your videos, Call or WhatsApp 0976 863661 or visit Crown TV on plot number 12, 374 slash 3, Woodlands Extension, Lusaka. Your top 10 Zambian music videos only on Crown TV. The Topstar Easter promotion is here. Enjoy great discounts and extra entertainment on Topstar. Starting the 3rd of April, get yourself a Topstar antenna decoder at a slashed price of only 199 quacha from 249 quacha. Extend your entertainment this April and witness the best of football on SD Sports channels. Also stay glued to the best and latest episodes of Pungwa, the game duo, every Sunday at 19 hours and the most fast 
fascinating series every day at 2040 hours on Novella Channels, plus the best of Bollywood and more. Holiday time is the entertainment time. Keep the kids indoor with the best and most hilarious cartoon channels, such as Cartoon, ST Kids, Toonami, and many more. So hurry and give your family a memorable Easter. Subscribe now for only 160 quarter. Topster, enjoy digital life. Welcome back in our international news, courtesy of Al Jazeera. This is what we have for today. Another attempt to end fierce fighting in Sudan fails as the army and the country's largest paramilitary group battle for power. Escaping the violence in Sudan's capital, thousands tried to get out of Khartoum as the fighting continues. A stampede in the Yemeni capital kills at least 78 people who gathered to receive food and donations. And survivors of the war in Ukraine testify at the US capital as politicians hold a hearing on allegations of Russian war crimes. People in Sudan have been bracing for another night of violence as the latest ceasefire agreement falters. Thousands in the capital are fleeing for safety as a power struggle between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces continues. At least 270 have been killed and thousands injured in five days of fighting. Peter Morgan wraps up the day's events. Explosion and gunfire shake Khartoum. Despite a ceasefire announcement, the fighting between the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid support forces shows no sign of easing. The humanitarian cost is rising. Hundreds of people have been killed and thousands are injured. Healthcare services have been brought to a standstill. After heavy bombardment, hospitals and clinics are closed, leaving patients untreated. Ambulances have been targeted, preventing them from reaching the wounded. The doctors had to evacuate all the cases, except the cases inside the intensive care units. There is a shortage in staff, medicine and oxygen. The hospital is witnessing a shortage in many things, even the doctors we have left. The streets are eerily quiet. People say they're afraid to leave their homes. They've been dealing with stray gunfire. Others have been assaulted. Khalid Osman's mother was killed by shrapnel. She was actually at her house in the living room, trying to take shelter over there, when uh, a sudden mortar landed right outside their house, and she, uh, she caught one of the shrapnels that came from the mortar and died almost immediately. With no pause to the violence, Sudan could face a growing hunger crisis. Three attempts at a ceasefire for people to be able to leave their homes and stock up on basic necessities have failed. And in the first hours of the fourth attempt, heavy artillery fire can be heard in parts of the capital. Many have lost hope of the fighting coming down soon and are now focused on finding ways to leave Khartoum to safety. Those who do venture out are trying to stock up on basic necessities. The violence is a power struggle between Army Chief Abdel Fattah al-Burhan and Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, who commands the Rapid Support Forces. Once allies, now the two generals disagree about when and how the paramilitary unit will be integrated into the armed forces, the last barrier in the shift to a civilian-led government. They dashed all the dreams of the youth and the Sudanese revolution. The revolution that started peacefully has now became a fight. I'm disappointed. Both generals say they're committed to the transition agreement and are blaming one another for the escalation. Just weeks ago, there was a sense of hope that long-running negotiations had succeeded. But now, Sudan once again faces an uncertain future. Heba Morgan, Al Jazeera, Khartoum. Well, the fighting in Sudan is threatening to worsen an already dire situation. The UN Humanitarian Office says nearly 16 million people will need assistance this year. That's about a third of the population and more than three million who've been forced from their homes need help. About four million children under the age of five and pregnant women are acutely malnourished. And as many as 11.7 million people
don't have enough food to eat. At least 78 people have died in a stampede during a charity handout in Yemen's capital. Hundreds of people in Sana'a had gathered to receive financial assistance and food. Overcrowding then led to a crush. Authorities fired shots to disperse the crowd, which witnesses say hit a nearby generator, causing an explosion. Ahmed al has more from Sana'a. This is a traffic uh, incident uh, that happened uh, after eight eight o'clock in the mo at night. Uh, people, uh, poor people, got together in the, near this uh, uh, the distribution uh, center for uh, distributing financial uh, assistance for poor people. Uh, there were uh, hundreds of people there waiting for to receive their uh, financial assistance. Uh, this uh, this is uh, really has sp sparked a nationwide angry among people as this incident is the first of its kind to happen, especially at the, the, the last 10 days of uh, the holy month of Ramadan and also ahead of the uh, Eid of Al-Fitr. According to the spokesperson of the, uh, minister, uh, the Interior Ministry, he, he said that the two merchants have been uh, detained uh, because of this uh, incident. Uh, uh, they, they are calling on the merchants you know, to, in, in, they, in case they want to distribute their financial uh, assistance, they should go to the, uh, the, the, the government uh, ministry, and that the, which is the one who should uh, distribute assistance to people. Uh, usually merchants uh, distribute by themselves uh, as they have they lack the trust of the government uh, by themselves uh, mostly they, they also divide the money between the government and also for uh, money that they would like to distribute by themselves in order to reach the poor people and the the people who are in need so this uh, incident should uh, uh, would would require would also put an end maybe for this uh, kind of uh, uh, distribution of aid. There are around 17 p million people who are in need for assistance in Yemen because of the uh, because of the ongoing war in Yemen. After months of long. In football news, the Football Association of Zambia President Andrew Kamanga has reviewed that clubs will be paid for having players at this year's World Cup. Kamanga says this is aimed at appreciating clubs for their contribution of players to the 2023 World Cup and to women's football in general. Kamanga says, however, says this should not be the reason for those tasked to select the World Cup team, not to select players on merit. Kamanga was speaking during the Zambia Premier League, delinking consultative meetings with Zambia Women's Super League clubs. Some of the regular national team contributors are lead ladies football club, chief executive officer Oliver Shalala, and Red Arrows Football Club says the FIFA gesture to pay clubs is a huge motivation to clubs. Zambia Women's National Team qualified for FIFA World Cup to be co-hosted by Australia and New Zealand. The Zambia Women National Soccer Team will be among 32 teams that will participate in this year's FIFA Women's World Cup that will be co-hosted by Australia and New Zealand. $960 has already been given by FIFA for team's preparation. Football Association of Zambia First President Andrew Kamanga has announced that local clubs which will contribute players to the FIFA World Cup will also be paid. This year all the teams that will have their players competing at the World Cup will be entitled to receive money directly from uh, FIFA. So if you've got one, two, three players, expect a payment from FIFA. Our job will be just to notify FIFA how many clubs have contributed players, even one player you will get paid. This was during the consultative meeting held here at Golden Peacock Hotel to delink the Super League. Elite Women's Football Club representative and Red Arrows Women's Football Club who are part of the meeting are happy with this move by FIFA. Uh, the money that we get may not even suffice but it's too good that we are able to get something into the club because right now the Women's League has been unsponsored for three years. There hasn't been funding coming from FAS or coming from any sponsor. So that funding coming from FIFA will actually go a long way for all the clubs that will be able to send players out there. Unfortunately, some of the clubs have lost their players who are in the national team to European clubs that want to take advantage of the same. 
women football has not seen sponsorship at that level in which it is supposed to be. Basically, clubs have been footing their sponsorships through their sponsors. And we needed a time when FAS would come in and pump in some resources just to motivate the clubs. So with funds coming in from FIFA, which is direct fund to the club, I think it's a very good achievement. The Zambia Women's Super League has been running for three years now and FAS is planning to delink the league. Clubs participating in this consultative meeting are equally happy with FAS's move to delink the league. They say this will help in commercializing the league. For Crown TV Sports, I'm Linosi Victoria. The Tulin Youth Sports Challenge held at OIDC Zambia Sports Development Center has attracted 60 new players in Lusaka. The 16 players are from surrounding communities of Lusaka's Mandevu, Matero and Chazanga areas. Tulin's Youth Sports Challenge are developmental programs that are aimed at grooming youth young athletes from age of 8 to 18. The program has 11 sports disciplines which include basketball, boxing, handball, netball, techball, Hockey, beach volleyball, taekwondo, judo, rugby, and swimming. Albert Banda, a 16-year-old beach volleyball player, says joining two links has helped him stay away from engaging in alcohol and uh, drug abuse in the communities. And Victor Kunda, who is also a beach volleyball player, has called on fellow young people to join two links. Victor! I'm a man of encouragement to our course because outside who I disagree, are many things that are happening. So I just want to encourage him because we are who I I na benefit to put my name, benefit in one of them will say, time and he was running out. Put in a time to miss out of the combo and baby sticker because one baby sticker, one baby, 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 uh, under 20 beach volleyball, we are going to resort to some areas. That's what the coach told us. For beach volleyball, I joined it for two reasons. One, when I stay home, I never used to have anything to do. Plus, I had a lot of energy which I needed to get rid of. So the benefits are that I'm learning skills, different skills, such that even after school, I can come back here, join the small club, and they can start giving me a bit of money. Yes, actually, I have a friend of mine who is to see playing volleyball. Then I got that interest to join. Welcome here. I had to join. For starters, I would encourage them to come here. Those who are just found in the in the um, in the areas they have smoking and drinking, they can come here, learn a few skills. To end the news, here's a recap of our headlines. ERB will tomorrow announce new ZESCO tariffs. President Hichile Maria frames commitment to church partnership. The NACO gives Kusefa Pangwin a ceremony with 150,000 kwacha. And in sports, FAS President Andrew Kamanga reviews payment of clubs with players at the World, World, World Cup. Thank you so much for joining me on the news desk. My name is Tandu Ebanda Kavaso. Pleasant viewing and God bless you.